YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. Look at this, it's the Mall 1.5 from FMS. It's absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful landing lights, nav lights, takeoff and landing flaps. And look at that pilot. It looks super happy. Detailed scale, clear canopy with the simulated glass. Loving it, guys. Okay, so that was just takeoff flaps, by the way. What we're gonna do is this also has one other really cool feature that we've seen on some of the competitive brands that'd be thrust reverse. Very nice. Okay, so this is gonna be our second video for us. And what I did was I added a feature and that is a mix. I'm gonna clear my timer. The mixing is for the ailerons to rudder. I tied it on my flaps, five and 20%. Okay, so with full landing flaps, we have a 20% aileron to rudder tie or mix. And then we have a 5% on takeoff flaps. And then of course, with no flaps, there is no mix. So let's go ahead and without further ado, get this thing lined up and go ahead and do some taking off. Here we go, here we go. So on the outside hole now for both the elevator and rudder. And as you can see in the slower flight performance, that mix really does help. I mean, I'm already doing it with my thumb, but just look how much more controlled that is. Also, I balanced the prop with some tape off camera. The camera crew had a doctor appointment this morning. And so I was out here being a good supportive husband and playing with my toys. So look at the stall turn now. So much better guys into the full landing flaps on the way out. Absolutely gorgeous flight performance now. I feel like it is more manageable and it doesn't sneak up on you. I also made about a six or seven degree turn or bend in the rudder linkage to help clear up a little bit of a bind. I actually tried going to the inner second hole from the inside first. And I thought, this is really crappy. I thought it was gonna improve the flight performance, but it actually made it a lot worse. So here we are guys, outside hole, maximum throw authority on the rudder, maximum throw authority on the elevator. And it's been glorious, 50% throttle. Let's show you the climb on 50 at 4S. Just amazing full landing flaps here. Just so you can see, it can technically sort of almost hammerhead, but I think you'd be better off if you were gonna do that with a 2200 4S. You would have a better power to weight ratio. And as you can see, like I said, you can get it to work, but it's just kind of not a 3D plane. So if you're comparing this to the Timber 1.5, which would be a very similar plane, you would have to see that this is probably a little bit more of a scale general aviation aircraft and it's a little bit harder to fly. Not that it's hard to fly full landing flaps coming in now. It's just a little bit harder to fly because you actually have to fly it. Now, that being said, it's not a hard to fly plane. It just happens to be that you have to do something to keep it in the air. And that's one of the reasons why I enjoy it. And I think a lot of you more skilled, more experienced pilots are gonna really enjoy the mall because you can really do some fun stuff with it. And it's not just super easy. I feel like the timber is just so easy. You end up doing crazy 3D stuff when you really didn't mean to. And so I gotta say, I'm really happy with the mall. I love the malls. We've done two so far. And we've been very, very happy with them all. Both of them uh, under the E-Flight branding. This of course under FMS. And it does have the Reflex V2. And we've been satisfied, but not thrilled. On some planes, it seems to be a lot better than others. Well, not a lot better, a little better than others. I just think the easy way to put it is that the AS3X and Safe will give you a more locked in feel. Even though this stuff works good, it's just not as good. Maybe a five, 10% difference. It's not a huge difference. And if you're dollars to donuts, you may find that the reflex is plenty good for the cost ratio. Cost to benefit ratio might be slightly better on it because then you can get away with a 620 
like we used on this. Also, we did tape in our rear hatch, which is on the bottom, and that hatch gives you access to where the receiver sits. Now, I'm not sure if you guys can tell, but this windsock is pointed straight out. I'm gonna just bring this plane right in, kind of next to it. You see what I'm talking about? We are flying straight into the wind right here. Look at this, about 30% throttle here. Whoa, this thing will get dipped if you let it. Okay, to take off flaps. We are seeing about eight and a half, nine minutes to low voltage sort of issues but we get power the whole way through the roll. Man, that's so weird. You get into certain spots with this plane and it just doesn't like to roll. So if you're figuring on 10 minutes on a really good day, you can fly this thing. That's a pretty good flight time. But that being said, I don't think you're gonna get that on 2200. We've been flying on 3200 4S. Also on 3S, you're gonna have plenty of flight performance to do scale maneuvering, full landing flaps here. But just keep in mind, you have thrust reverse and you can slow that thing down on a dime if you want to. Now out of the thrust reverse, let's show a little grass off before we kill a battery, full up elevator. Do not be afraid of full up elevator, it's your friend. In fact, I have to go get that. Okay, full up elevator, what I was saying is, don't be afraid of getting into it hard on grass because it will tip over on the nose. So just be prepared for it. The rock hard tires are great in the grass. They are not so great on the pavement. What I'm gonna do is I'll show you guys a real short landing on our runway. Nope, right there. I'm gonna come in behind us between the house. Camera crew, you good? Mm -hmm. Okay, full landing flaps deployed. We're gonna try to hit just on the runway here, right in front of us. So you can land in less than you can take off. Okay, full landing flaps deployed. Full up elevator, forward thrust. Let's do a stool takeoff. There you go, guys. That thing gets up quick. And you can ride that high alpha all the way up to the moon if you wanted. It's just amazing. Okay, out of the takeoff flaps, excuse me, into the takeoff flaps from the landing. And now we're just in normal flight mode. Kind of a dirty roll there. Coming back down. Beautiful. Full landing flaps. We're gonna go on the inside this time. Now, as you guys know, Brian Phillips RC style, I like to run these batteries until they're dead, okay? I don't know that we'll necessarily kill the battery on this one, but we are actually over our timer right now. Mm -hmm. So as a result, you might get to see a dead stick landing. Ooh, look at that turbulence there. Did you see that? That was mm -hmm. crazy. Let's try just doing a rollout landing. Just a nice one. We're gonna take off flaps. We'll just show you a nice scale looking landing. Oh, beautiful guys. Absolutely gorgeous. We're gonna turn it into a touch and go because we can and it was absolutely glorious. So folks, if you want a great scale, general aviation flight experience, copy the settings we used on this plane in the Unbox Build Radio setup, plus stick it in the outside hole on both the rudder and the elevator and you'll be happy you did. Because look at this, guys. Just rolling along, no problems. Absolutely gorgeous flight performance. You'll really like them all. It is a great, one of a kind looking, amazing general aircraft, general aviation aircraft. And on 4S, 3200 smart packs, Gen 1, Gen 2 doesn't really make a big difference. You're gonna be really happy with that thing. Down the runway. So folks, if you like to support Brian Phillips RC and all the things that we do, 
All you have to do is look no further than the video description, buy the planes, batteries, receivers, transmitters, and things that we review, and you'll be helping to support us, both financially from contributions of the companies that we do work with to bring these videos to you, but also by helping us to build clout with these different companies so that you can rest assured, if we bring sales, they're gonna wanna send us more equipment to show off and that's the way this whole RC ecosystem works in our regard. And so we're really happy that you guys are helping to put us in a position to be able to do that. We love bringing these videos to you. The camera crew and I work really hard to do it. We've been making a lot of upgrades with our equipment and namely our internet most recently. And uh, we're trying to be able to deliver reviews, long format and do it quicker between and more of them. And one of the best ways you can help us is just buy these amazing aircraft when you see something you like. Not when you see something you don't like. We never want you to do that. Let's do a grass ops landing here. We'll come in kind of right at our feet if we can do this right. Okay. Okay, ride that elevator, ride that elevator, ride that elevator, get past. Ride that elevator, ride that elevator. There it is, guys, right at our feet. No thrust reverse needed at all. Throttle cuts on. We're at four minutes and nine past our timer at six and a half. A little bit of blah, blah, blah time in there as you know it. Let's go ahead and show you one more thing. Let's just go ahead and keep flying right now. But I love taking off over this little berm. It's like one of my favorite places to take off on the property. I like going over here and just kind of rolling into it. Get that tail wheel up and then just jump off the edge. Let's go over there, camera crew. So for those of you that didn't already know, that's good right there. We're gonna be at Joe Knoll. Joe Knoll in South Carolina. So we're excited to see you there. If you guys are gonna come visit us, please do, that'd be awesome. We're looking forward to meeting some of you in person that have been watching for years, or maybe even meeting some new folks. There's supposed to be a lot of people at this event, so we're excited to be a part of it. After all, we know that at the end of this camera, there's some real people, us, and at the end of the, at the end of the videos, there's you watching. And we love that you're part of it. Little hop, skip, and jump down the front yard there. We're gonna go up and around. We're gonna see if we can take this Weird kind of, weird kind of angle. Just bringing it in with just takeoff laps this time. Guys, loving, loving flying this plane. Had a really good time playing with it today. Kind of getting a little bit of a feel for it. So if you guys love general aviation, you will love this plane. You should buy one. That is a lot of flight time we've gotten on that this is. thing. I've been like super conservative or what's the deal? I don't feel like you've been super conservative. No, not really. But you should be pushing 13 minutes. Jeez, that's crazy. Really good flight time though. Yeah. I think 10 minutes is a safe bet though. Cause you don't want to destroy your packs like I do. I'm mean to my batteries. Yeah. When they're that greasy, I can't resist the touch and go. I'm sorry, guys. I'm waiting for a terrible landing to take it. <laughs> right. So we hope we'll see you at Joan All. We're probably not gonna do any more footage except for the footage that we film and goes after. Correct? Correct. We're running out of time. Yeah, we really are, because we're leaving in like a day and a half. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's crazy. Less than, because our flight is Somebody picked the early flight. Stop it right where you want it. I love that about <laughs> thrust reverse. Okay, guys, we're seven minutes 18 plus six minutes and 30. I don't think we had a lot of time, but we were paused when I walked over there because I got stuck in a rut. Yeah, you did. So we probably did lose about a minute or so. So 12 minutes on this one, and I would assume it's pretty much spent. I have the... You have, the S my, you have the XBC battery checker? Pocket, yep. Let's go ahead and check it out. Uh, love the landing lights on this thing. When yes. you drop below those trees, 
You can see them way outboard. It really helps you to tell what angle you're at. Mm -hmm. And just, I love the way this plane flies. I gotta tell you though, I like it a lot better with those holes on the outside and that mix that I did on the uh, aileron to the rudder. I don't generally mix aileron to rudder. I don't like the way it flies, but this thing just has some nasty habits. When you get into wash, there's certain spots. If you catch the wind at your tail, it will just like not work. The rudder will just fail to do anything. It's very weird. Um, and I don't know if that's just because of the shape of the plane. Also, I taped this down and re-glued it. I had a little bit of delamination right there. And that was super disappointing for me, uh, given that we've only got, you know, what, like six or seven flights on it total and uh, two flights on camera. Okay. 1% yes. left, guys. Pretty dead. Talk about using it up. <laughs> so there you have it. And I just feel like this plane is a total winner. My only issue with this plane is it definitely takes a little bit more skill to fly than your timber. But I like that it, at my position that I'm in right now, the place where I am as a pilot. Um, I think it makes you fly the plane a little bit more than the timber. And I also like the fact that it's got a cool color. I liked it red, I like it blue, I would like it yellow. I think you could do purple, you could do green, you could do all sorts of different colors, but I really do like it in the blue. I like it in the red, especially. Um, but the blue looks good on this sky. Sometimes with blue, you get blue that really blends into the skies. So far, and admittedly, we kind of have a gray blue sky today and we haven't had any issues also, the rock hard tires have not really been an issue. It's just kind of weird that it's not been an issue. Look what I have. Are you gonna let me fly one more time? Or do we have to hurry up and get in and do that other thing? I really wanna fly more. But at the same I time, I feel like you guys have already seen what you need to see. By the way, I just wanna show you how I balance the prop. I just put a long piece of tape on it. I actually start it and just spin it up. You listen for the noise. If it vibrates like crazy, I put a second piece on uh, once I established which one was lighter. And uh, I ended up doing, doing two long pieces of tape and just press them on, get them firmly attached. And even with thrust reverse, you're on for such a short period of time, it doesn't like to pull the tail off. So if you do thrust re reverse a lot, you might actually rip that tape off. So the better way to do the balancing would be to actually sand down the heavy side. But I just think with that bull nose, with that sharp edge, it's just kind of a noisy prop. So you might confuse the noise with actually in balance. In my case, I think it was mostly just a little bit out of balance, okay? So me and the camera crew are happy to report that the 10 has been working great. When we did our first video today, I had a piece of tape that I just put over this to keep the rain off of it because we actually flew in the rain. I'm assuming based on how much better I felt with this flight, we'll probably be leading off with this video. Mm -hmm. And then there'll be the next video was actually just from earlier today and it was our true maiden. We'll go ahead and show that too. So you can see kind of the difference. Maybe you'll be able to tell the difference in the whole positions, but really the mods here, I'm gonna just hold, hold that camera crew. These two holes are what I'm talking about if you didn't already understand what I meant. And you see, I put that little teeny bend in there because I wanted to match the angle of that fixture because it's not straight. And so it makes kind of almost a bind. And then over here, I just went to the outside hole. Now I did admittedly use a 1 16th inch drill bit to open that hole up, okay? Mm -hmm. So I know that we customarily would film all that, but the camera crew had an appointment and so I had stuff that needed to get done. So we just did it quick. And we hope we don't irritate you guys too much by showing that or not showing that on camera. We've done it a number of times, so it shouldn't be that big a deal. And then balancing this prop, that was super easy. Um, but otherwise also this little gap, um, while it's ugly, it hasn't been a problem so far. And it has allowed, I don't know if you could tell, but when I was doing touch and goes, there's definitely a little bit of splay that's allowed on the landing gear. And these landing gear, while beautiful, are rock hard, okay? So in terms of complaints, we're just talking about rock hard tires. Everything else is pretty good. And then of course, you know, having to tape that down and glue it and stuff, that's just kind of annoying, but I don't really care that much. It's not that big a deal. It might've been from just the way I was flying it. Um, but I don't think you're gonna have the same problem. That might've been a fluke. 
I put a little china glue on a, a zip tie tail and just slid it along and then I just put a piece of tape on it. And I'll never think about it again, it'll be totally fine. So otherwise, great plane, amazing flight characteristics. You're gonna love it and I hope that you buy one from the link in the video description below. That is after all how we earn a living doing this or not really earn a living, but earn whatever we earn. So we hope that you'll buy one from the link if you decide to buy one. Love this plane, FMS puts a good product together. And then also, oh, one more thing, just so you can see it up close. I just did clear pieces of tape around this. I did find this, it was right there. Mm -hmm. And so while we're flying at about five minutes or so into that video, it was like 517, you can see it pop off. Now 517 would be on top of whatever we've got going on this video. So I have no idea what that exact timestamp is yet, but I go up and I pull up sharp and it just falls off. And I don't know why, but it was just sitting on the ground. I went out and found it. We used the footage to help find it. Hmm. So overall, two thumbs up, love this mall, loved it before, still love it. Maybe just slightly better on AS3X, but honestly, I felt so much better about the flight performance after I moved this to the outside hole and the outside hole that really it's probably not that big a deal. So guys, stay tuned. There's so much more coming from Brian Phillips RC and we hope to catch you at Joe Nall. If we do, if we do, great. If we miss you, maybe we'll be at the next one and we can see you there. Uh, the next event, not necessarily Joe Nall again, but we do look forward to the possibility of seeing you at possibly another one after Joe Nall in a few weeks. Mm -hmm. but we're still kind of hedging our bets on good weather and stuff. So either way, we appreciate you being here with us. Thanks so much for supporting us. Uh, if you want to be a Patreon and help support us on a monthly basis, we have links down below, just below where this plane, battery, receiver, transmitter are listed. And then there's PayPal if you just want one-time donations. And then super thanks, of course, which is uh, handled by YouTube. So you can do that super easy as well. But either way, we still think the best way is to just get a plane if you love them. And that will help support you, support us, and support the manufacturers that help keep us doing this. So thanks for watching, guys. So much more coming from Brian Phillips RC. YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. Look at this new mall. It's 1.5 meters of pure beauty. There's a guy in there flying this plane, and there is an instrument cluster. Huge barn door flaps. We have our takeoff flaps and our landing flaps here. And I love the landing lights. Beautiful plane from FMS, we're gonna get started right now. And there is one other feature that we're not used to seeing from FMS, but here goes nothing. Let's go ahead and back taxi out to the runway. Oh yeah, that would come in pretty handy if you use the included floats, or not included floats, depending on how you order it. Okay, we're in position here, 3200. Hear that beep, that means you switched. 3200 4S. Virgin run here, beautiful flying on the reflex. We're at like sub 50% throttle here on 4S. Absolutely flying rock solid. We've got some light rain today, which would not be uncustomary for a float aircraft to fly in light rain. But of course, we're not flying a float equipped aircraft just quite yet. So let's go crazy. That was 100% throttle there on 4S. Full flaps on the way around. Two second deployment. We've got this light rain hitting us. And I'm just gonna tell you something. If you guys ever decide to get them all, it is a super fun flying plane. It reminds me a lot of the Timber in its flight characteristics, but it is definitely a little bit more challenging to fly. So if you're a brand new pilot, you might wanna think about holding off for a couple of planes on the mall. You gotta give it some power. But I love the way this one flies. Okay, full landing flat. Got that balloon tamed nicely. Boy, that looks so good coming at us, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's show you guys some slow flight here. I'm gonna try to get a pass set up. We go by the runway camera crew. Okay. Now, the last time I flew in the rain, a little bit more. Good job. Let's set up this final. It's not a final though. We're just gonna do a super basic looking grass ops. So, oh yeah. Oh yeah. 
Now this is a stole plane too, if we didn't already mention. So a stole plane, it stands for short takeoff or landing. So full landing flaps. Let's show you a short landing and then we'll show you a short takeoff. I kind of dragged it out for you on the, the first takeoff. Oh, and by the way, if you decide you don't like reflex and you want to get the more locked in feel of AS3X and safe. <laughs> one wheel, that is awesome. Okay, getting back on the runway, the way good pilots do it. And then uh, I'm gonna go full throttle. We've got our landing flaps now, and I'm gonna go stole for you. See those, those, that tail wheel is sitting on a 10 foot break from the next crack, okay? So we'll just go ahead and try this. I'm gonna full up elevator, get into the throttle hard, and there she is, she's in the air, folks. <laughs> that is crazy, probably a six to seven foot lift into takeoff flaps now. More ordinary, built up, scale looking takeoff coming, but we're gonna try for another gorgeous short field takeoff, excuse me, short field landing here. Try getting it right where we want it. Oh, on the one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with that thrust reverse, you can just jack it to a stop. Okay, we're gonna go to takeoff flaps and we're just gonna get lined up here. Yep, love having thrust reverse, folks. It just makes it so fun. Okay, the mains are on one of the 10 foot brakes. The next brake is there. Here we go, full up elevator. Full throttle, there it is. Oh yeah, before you even hit the 10, so we're probably six to seven feet, and that's at near full throttle on 4S. Okay, full landing flaps, you get a little extra lift. Now, one thing I gotta say is that thing is a dang looker, and that's where you're gonna get your value out of this plane compared to the timber, little contrary tie to keep that nose up in that high alpha attitude but this thing just loves hanging out like that. 3200 4S fits barely, barely, but it does. And we are flying on a six and a half minute timer, mostly going from memory on what we remember having, and we will test it out of the rain with our XPC battery checker when we're done, because this is a Gen 2 pack. Okay, and to take off flaps now, a little bit more throttle, about 70%. Let's go ahead and get you some faster passes just to show you can cruise along, get to your destination in Cabo San Lucas. That sounds fun. Oh, and by the way, it's not dead calm today. It's pretty, pretty calm though. And yes, we did lock the stabilizer on, okay? Now, one thing you're gonna notice about this compared to the timber, and the reason I keep comparing it to the timber is because I did in the unbox and I remember that's really a pretty good basis for comparison, to be honest, is that I just feel like, oh, I need a little bit of elevator trim too. I was just noticing on that pass, I was like really riding the elevator. Let's see if I can get that. I can kind of push down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Could be just the, oh, there's Wind. something sticking out the bottom. Something sticking out the bottom. Yeah, it might be the receiver. It looks like it's uh, trying to poop. Okay, let's, uh, we're in the wind right now. Let's just do a really slow pass. You wanna look for the poop? Oh, yep. <laughs> we lost our hatch. That is definitely the receiver. <laughs> oh, that is hilarious. And yet it would be so annoying, so annoying because I have no clue where it is. Nope. I didn't see it fall off at all. It's probably where I did one of my touch and goes. So what we'll do is we will look after we land, but we gotta land because we're getting a lot of drag and that drag is going to constitute a problem. So let's go ahead and put on the full landing flaps. Let's bring it down the runway and just take a nice, hopefully greasy landing. That was not greasy at all and we're almost to our timer. So we're just gonna go ahead We're gonna cut it around. And yes, I am babying it. So if you notice that that was a really, I normally would have just janked it to the ground with thrust reverse. That's one thing you gotta watch for on this plane is if your guts start dangling out, you need to respond to it. Going right over that beautiful cherry that we're probably eventually gonna have to cut down. Let's just try grass ops. Here we go. Okay guys, throttle cuts on. Let's get out of the rain and we'll talk some more. Okay, so as you guys can see, the throttle cut's on. 
my receiver popped out. I did some amazing cable management in there. As you can see, you'll, you'll pick up on that in the Unbox Build Radio setup. Now, a couple things to consider. I'm pretty sure that we had that clipped, like 99% sure. Mm -hmm. And I remember we lost one of those on our last one. So I can't remember at what flight it was, but we did have an issue with it. Now, also, I just wanted to show you one thing I did to improve my circumstances on my NX-10, okay? First of all, you can see the timer here. That's past our six, but we stopped almost right at six today, or six and a half. Six and a half. Okay, so maybe 6.45, right? So six minutes, 45 seconds. I did two flaps of tape over my scroller. And you're like, well, why did you do that, Brian? I did that because the last time I flew in rain, it got wet and it caused problems. Subsequently, I had to switch into a new one because we were just so tight on deadlines. But we later did fix it. <laughs> so we took it apart and fixed it. This is what we were using to fly on. All right, so we've got, this is the battery we're using. We're apologizing now because the uh, FedEx girl just showed up with our stuff from China. Weird, right? <laughs> so we paused. Anyway, so this is the 50C uh, 4S3200 Gen 2. Now, the only thing that's bad about Gen 2 is that Gen 1 would give you the balance lead. Also, I noticed, I don't know if you guys heard when I said it, but I'm going to give myself some trim, okay? That trim adjustment was because we had our doohickey hanging out the bottom, okay? And then I flew by and I'm like, holy cow, I've got my receiver hanging out. Okay, so again, not a huge deal, but a little bit annoying. And yes, another delivery is coming. <laughs> okay, sorry guys, we have to get deliveries when we're filming and when it's the morning time. So here we go. So we're gonna pop this off. Me and the camera crew are gonna review the footage and see if we can find the bottom cover. Yeah. And we'll probably just throw a piece of tape on it to be safe. If you're flying that thing in water, I would highly recommend you tape uh, it looks just like this. I would tape just along the front and the back. Once it's on the bottom, just tape it. And then you don't mm -hmm. have to worry about that. These things are easy to catch on things like grass. And I didn't even occur to me hmm. that that might get caught because you're going to be, it goes like this. So as the grass blades and stuff catch it, it could potentially pop that. Now it could also be flexing in the fuse, but I don't think that's what's going on here. Okay. These are improved from the last batch. Our red ones that we've done, these were really sloppy. They must have spent some extra care on getting these right. Although I do not like that release is so sharp compared to what we're used to having. So you have to be a little bit more careful. Let's check our voltage with the XBC battery checker, a tool that everybody should have if you're using smart gear. And we are at 3.8, 33% left, almost perfect, almost perfect. Trouble is, and this is the truth, guys, we could have flown for like another third. <laughs> but when it starts, when your guts spill out and it starts drawing you down, then you got to respond. And in this case, I'm going to reset my trim back to clear, back to nothing, because I didn't notice an appreciable problem until we were on that flight and I had noticed that that thing had popped out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually clear my trim back to normal because I couldn't get it to restore to normal flight ops. And that's because I wouldn't be able to overwhelm that. Now, one other thing I'm gonna say is if you wanna do more aggressive maneuvering, right now, we are on the second hole in on the servo for both the rudder and elevator. And I feel like the rudder could go one more hole in and have even less movement because it is wonk on the, on the rudder. We've seen that before from FMS on a few of these but I might go all the way out on the elevator because I'd like a little bit more authority on the elevator. So just personal taste issues like that. Uh, remember, if you go further out on the control arm, you're gonna get more deployment of the control surface. So let's look at that real quick as we continue. You see what I'm talking about? We are on the second hole in. I feel like that could go in again. And then over here, we are in the second hole in, and I feel like that could go out so you get even more deployment of the elevator. And I gotta say, this thing is gorgeous. It looks the part. So if you guys are thinking about getting a plane, and by the way, I gotta say the hard, rock hard, um, diamond tipped blade is slightly softer 
than these tires. They worked pretty good out there. I was amazed. I was able to do one wheels on accident, but I'll take it still. So that means I could do it on purpose too. And something about our wind in the last few weeks, just a FYI, we're getting ready to go to Jonal. We're assuming you're gonna see this before we go to Jonal. And so we hope that we'll see you at Jonal. But if we don't, or if something comes up, then that's just the way it is. And we apologize for that. We don't mean to you know, talk about things that you can't be involved with. But uh, if we see you at Jonal, we're gonna be excited. We want this video published in time, but we hate to put out product that isn't good enough. And our weather usually helps to dictate whether or not we can get good quality footage. And so we feel like a maiden in rain was okay, but a maiden in rain when we lose a cover may not make the cut. So anyway, not sure how this is gonna work, but we will keep you informed. And six and a half minutes on a plane this size, is eh, it's okay. I'd like to see a little bit more because I think we're gonna draw it down to next to nothing on the next flight. But stay tuned, so much more from Brian Phillips RC. If we don't have another flight, I'll be really surprised, but up against this tight deadline, we might do another revisit early on just to try to wet your whistle because this plane is really good. If you wanna see the Unbox Build Radio setup, it will be one minute before our maiden flights. And hopefully that will help you to understand how well this went together. And it did go together well. We had a little bit of trouble on the four screws, uh, which we've had. We had to basically like put the back one in. Megan had to push on the other side and I had to yank on the wing and kind of brace it up against my body. It's no big deal. Uh, but beyond that, Everything went smooth. Mm -hmm. Thrust reverse was super easy. As you could see, because it was hanging out, the AR620 worked fine. We just used a spare channel for that. And we did neglect to do our three modes instead. So if you want to have both three modes on off for stabilizer and then auto leveling and stabilizer, that's three. You would, you would be able to use one channel to do that on a three position switch. You can accomplish that but you're gonna to have to either give up the thrust reverse on an AR620, or you're gonna to have to tie it to another channel, which I would not recommend on this plane. You need the full throw on the flaps for this plane. So you can't do it like we did on the T28, unless you wanna just have minuscule flap function, but you want the flap function. You need it on this plane, okay? So don't cut that out. Also, if you wanna go up to the eight channel, the AR820, uh, or excuse me, the, the AR8020T, <laughs> rather, then you could actually separate out your ailerons and you could do crow. But you don't need crow on this plane. I don't think it's gonna add much to the flight performance. Um, crow is always fun, but the thing is adding an extra channel for one aileron just so you can get auto leveling and safe, you're gonna lose, you're gonna lose your stabilizer on one wing too. And I think you kinda need it on this plane because it's got such a long pivot. So I would not suggest doing that. If you're gonna do that and you want crow, just get an AR630 tear out this and then you can still potentially accomplish what you want because you gain your mode buttons on channel seven and eight for gain and mode, okay? And then the first six pluggable channels will give you the same functions we have here. But of course you have to spend a lot of money to get a 630 or a 631 or even a 637T, then you add telemetry in there and you're gonna have pack voltage and stuff, which would be really nice. So just a couple of thoughts to consider. I also feel like the AS3X, from what I remember on the E-Flight version of this exact same size class, everything's the same except red, definitely felt a little bit more refined. And that was the AS3X in safe, okay? Now, again, we're not flying on auto leveling on this because we can't turn it on and off. We have locked our mode in stabilized mode. So we'll show you how to do it in the Unbox Build radio setup. Hopefully we answered all your questions about this mall. It is amazing, it's gorgeous, it looks really good. There is plenty of splay in the landing gear. I feel like it's definitely a good plane and you wanna buy it. However, tape this thing, once you get it on and you're settled, um, then just tape it. You can always untape it because you're on white unfinished surface here, you're not gonna hurt it. And if you are concerned or if you ever paint yours and you wanna tape it, tape it and then cut it with an X-Acto knife, just like we did on the UMXs. Put the cover back on, put another piece of tape, then you can peel the second piece of tape off of the substrate and you won't lose any color in. All right guys, that's all you got. Thanks for watching. If you wanna help support us, throw us a few bucks on Patreon or PayPal or a super thanks, but definitely smash the like button. Come back for so much more here on Brian Phillips RC and click the bell for notifications. Don't forget to choose all so you see all the new footage that we put out and there is a lot coming. So thanks so much for being part of our little RC family. And if we have another video, 
We hope you'll be watching it right now.